Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Happy New Year! It's 2019, and it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Hey, welcome back again, you guys. Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. My name is Jay. I'm your host, and I welcome you back, everyone. Happy New Year. And uh, it's Tuesday night, so even though it's, you know, New Year's Day, got to do a show. And my name is Jay, and you know I'm here every Tuesday night talking about all things car hauling, uh, new car shipper questions, auto transport business coaching, car hauling dispatch training, how to use the load boards, Finding the right auto transport broker. Understanding auto shipping. Listen, if you want to learn car shipping, watch Auto Transport Intel. Uh, this is where car haulers work together, and I want to welcome you back to the show. So we're going to go to the live chat here in a second. But listen, if you're new to the show, if this is your first time being here, welcome to the show on New Year's Day. And every Tuesday, I welcome you back to... Oh, thank you so much. Every Tuesday, I welcome you back to the show, and I say hello, and we run the car hauler, and then after I do that, I'm going to say hello to the live chat, so hello to you, and also, uh, we're going to go into some industry news. I don't have a whole lot of news, because I've also been taking the break off, just like everybody else, hopefully, you know. I know there's some folks working through the holidays, and hopefully this show, you know, if you're working right now, or you're working today, you know, hopefully you enjoy this show a little bit more every time, knowing that it's back every Tuesday. And then we talk about memes and stuff on Facebook, and there's news and updates and legal info and technology information, you know. So whatever that is, that's the industry news. And then at the 30-minute mark into this show, right now it's 8.05. At about 8.30, we're going to go into, we're going to have a really interesting car shipper agent interview you know, what is this, man? I'm teasing it because it's going to be a cool interview, and I haven't had an interview quite like that yet. And then at the one-hour mark at about 9 o'clock, we're going to have a uh, another live panel discussion. Uh, it'll be me, my business partner, Ty, uh, Dave Williams from Clarksville Trucking, and Don from 929 Transport are all going to join us. And the significance of the panel is uh, everybody on the panel uh, knows me really well. And uh, you guys are getting to know me better uh, but we're going to talk about what's behind us, what's in front of us, and what's going on with Auto Transport Intel. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's a New Year's themed, you know, Happy New Year car transport kind of show. And, um, you know, bringing in some elements. So, you know, we're still celebrating the holidays, a little bit of time off. You know, hopefully everybody's feeling well. Um, Kimberly and I didn't stay up too late last night, so... We, we're feeling all right. She's on the, she's watching the stream. So if we're having any audio issues or video issues, please let us know. Otherwise, I think we're, uh, I think we're on track. So let's go to the live chat here, fellas. Uh, Matt from Anytime Towing is in first. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for tuning into the show. I hope you're doing well and happy New Year to you. And it, listen, guys, if you made it for the Christmas show, thanks for tuning in. Um, I know that these, you know, holiday and special event shows are, 
they're tougher for me to put together. And I know um, for you with your busy schedule, it's tough to tune in. So I thank you for taking the time, even if it's just a few minutes. I mean, I really appreciate that. Um, Vincent P is with us. Happy New Year, Vincent P. And welcome to the show. I think it's your first time here, and I, I appreciate you. You know, if you want to watch the show and not say hello, you can do that too, of course. But when you say hello, I, I really appreciate it. And the folks here with us appreciate it as well. Peterbilt379 is back with us. Hey, what's up? Peterbilt379. Uh, Clarksville Trucking Dave is with us. Hey, what's up, Dave? Um, and uh, I'm doing well, Peterbilt. I feel good. I'm feeling really good. I feel better every Tuesday. Um, Keith, what's going on? Keith says hello. Welcome to the show, Keith. Uh, Ariat says Happy New Year. Hey, how you doing? Happy New Year out there to you. I don't know where you guys are. Um, you know, feel free to share. You know, are you at home? Are you on the road? Um, are you having, you know, bad weather? Are you having good weather? Are you, you know, you on vacation? You happen to be t checking out the show. I'm always curious where people are. Um, it's actually one of the things I ask people when I start talking to somebody I haven't talked to, you know, where are you and, you know, and what are you doing? Cause I'm just sitting at a desk. I'm a guy sitting at a desk. I'm on the phone most of the time, all the time it seems. And, um, so I'm here. This is where I'm at. And you see me here every Tuesday night. Um, Patrick says, hello. What's up, Patrick? Welcome back to the show, man. You know, uh, it's been a year and a half now and, um, I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. Um, I hope to be liking it even more later this year. Uh, let's see here. My dad drives. Oh, okay. Ariat's going to pose a question. And Peterbilt beat him to it. My dad drives a 2017 Peterbilt 389 automatic with a Picard motor. And my dad hates the automatic with the Picard motors. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. You know what? Um, Ty. I know Ty will probably have some information for you. So, Ty, if you can answer him, that'd be awesome. Peterbilt 379, you're going to want to be around in an hour because between Don and Dave and Ty, those guys definitely will have opinions on uh, on your point. Um, Keith says, I need insurance. Any suggestions? Really, Keith? Interesting. Yeah, Pelican Trucking Insurance. Um, I'm going to run an ad here in about 20 minutes uh, or, or thereabouts for Pelican Trucking Insurance. So stick around. Get some contact info for Sam Farr. And that goes for, listen... See how this works? People need, right? We all need services. I mean, we all need services. So if you're a service provider, see how you can participate in the live chat and be a part of the show with your service and help out other car haulers out there. Absolutely. So that's cool. Uh, Mark at Trucking Answers, the year of J. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, I, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm falling behind on my emails. So Mark and other folks out there, if you've sent me emails and I haven't replied yet, I apologize. I will get to it. Um, you know, what I find interesting about the end of the year, fourth quarter is always the busiest. And then once the first quarter comes in and things get back on schedule, I feel like I've got more time than ever. So I'm really looking forward to getting back. Um, I want to, I want to get my email count down to zero in the next week or so. So that'd be great. And I'm preparing to go see Surge in Massachusetts, uh, January 22nd, Tuesday, January 22nd. So I appreciate that. I'm hoping to have a good year, Mark. I really am. When you are a car hauler, automatics suck. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, yeah, that, that is what I see on the face in Facebook. Okay, Ernest Martin says, Happy New Year. Hey, Happy, Happy New Year, Ernest. I appreciate you tuning in every time. I really do. Thanks for saying hello and joining us. Ariat says, which car hauler trailer is good, seven or eight? Wow, now that is a another big question about equipment. I, I can't answer that. Um, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Um, you know what I mean? Peterbilt379 says, Happy New Year. Faith and Freedom, Happy New Year. What's up? What's up, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff, we've got to have you back on the show again sometime soon. So listen, man, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I hear, like, there's some great things happening. Car Hauler 38 says, Happy New Year. Hey, what's up, Car Hauler 38? Vincent P., first time live and looking to get in the car hauling biz. Anything you and others share will be great. Vincent, we share a lot on this show. Um, some might say too much. I've actually had a few YouTube comments like, you know, don't give away all the info or something. I think that's hilarious. Well, you know what? I don't even know if I could, but I'm trying. So 
yeah, Vincent, keep watching my videos, keep joining the live show. If you see somebody live chat something that you think will help you, live chat them back. You know, comment below the video. Don't forget to like and share. And uh, yeah, we're here to help. So um, I guarantee, I don't, I don't guarantee a lot of things, but I will guarantee that this, you will find Auto Transport Intel helpful. And not so much drama. Um, so we're happy about that too. Brian says, Hey, what's up? Happy New Year's. Hey, Brian, welcome to the show. Peterbilt 379, if you could drive a custom show truck for a day, would you do it? If you could drive a custom show truck for a day, would you do it? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm interested. Email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'm curious, man. It's going to be an interesting year. Hey, Chico, what's up, man? Hey, Chico, did you see the, uh, I just shared a video today, um, Pull Dog Transport shot a new video. I know you're out there shooting videos. Listen, guys, car carrier TV, uh, trucking with leak. If you're out there, you're making car hauling videos, and if you're making trucking videos, I mean, even uh, um, American Trucker, uh, not New Age Trucker, but Truck in America, Listen, if you're if you're making videos and you want me to share them, I'm happy to share them. And you're welcome on my show. So, yeah, man. Well, Happy New Year to you, Chico. I look forward to your videos. Um, Clarksville. Keith Progressive is probably the best to start with. Interesting point. Interesting point. I know as a dispatcher, I like Progressive. Faith and Freedom. Slacker. I hauled a load today. <laughs> Jeff Cope just called me a slacker. What do you think about that, Ty? Darren Sherrod. I really want to get into three-car hauling. See... The, the three cars have a place in car hauling. We say this. It's a little misunderstood, and it's a little convoluted for some to understand as far as a business model, but it has a place. Does this business bring a lot of financial freedom? Hmm. Well, it brings a lot of financial headache. So, yeah, I suppose headache can, headaches are freedom. You have the freedom. I'm just kidding, man. No, listen, we try to keep it real, right? You know that if you talk to... Jay and Ty at CTS Business Coaching, and we're going to keep it real. Yeah? Yeah, you could call it financial freedom. You could call it that. Anytime Tony gives a thumbs up, Peterbilt 379, my dad used to drive a car hauler, Western Star 4900 with a cat. What's happening? Okay. Uh, my dad used to drive a car hauler, Western Star 4900 with a cat. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That sounds like you've got actually... Because of that, you know, and you know that equipment specifically, if anybody has a question for you, um, definitely be a good live chat potential on that. So, uh, and I appreciate that, Peter Bill, for sharing that. Chico says, thanks for having me there loading the BMW. <laughs> I know, dude. That's from Chico. That BMW, that Chico's loading that. And you're in the credits, man. You're in the description every show. And I appreciate it. I like that clip. Uh, Darren, thanks for this. Happy New Year. You're welcome, Darren. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. I really do, man. Um, you know, this, sh this show wouldn't be the same without you guys. And um, that's what's cool about it. That's why it's live. It's a live show so we can spend this time together, share information, you know, and hang out and, you know, be, be a car hauling community. Thanks for this. Oh, okay. Big, my big wrecker is an 86 Freight with a Cummins and a 9-speed. I am the antique show truck. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Dave says, Darren Sherrod, not starting out unless you have clients. Look up CTS. That's right, man. Thank you, Dave. We are here to help. We're going to talk about CTS here in a little bit. But CTS, Transport Business Coaching, go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com. We are in the business of helping you improve your car hauling business. That's what we do. Um, and it's working. It's really working. It's really cool. Uh, Evil Motorsports, Happy New Year. Hey, what's up, Evil Motorsports? You made it earlier than normal. See, I am paying attention. Darren Sherrod says, what is CTS? All right, I'm glad you asked. CTS Transport Business Coaching. Visit ctsbusinesscoaching.com. I know, people get tired of me saying that. My dad has spent most of his truck career as a car hauler. Cool. That's awesome, man. There's a lot. I mean, there are years. Oh, Peter. <laughs> that's right. Well, that you know what's cool about that is that um, you can learn a lot from him. And um, so keep doing that. And thanks for joining us in the show. I appreciate your comments. Car Hauler 38. Happy New Year, everyone. Well, it is. You know, it's, it's kind of exciting. You know, when you count that down, eight, seven, you know how to count down. When you hit the zero and it's really 2019, it is interesting, isn't it? You kind of feel, you can feel something. 
I felt something. I, every year I feel something. And um, now, you know, does it wear off? Does it already seem old hat? No, now I'm in the now I'm in the what's gonna happen phase. What's gonna is there anything really gonna happen? I don't know. Is anything bad gonna happen? Are good things gonna happen? I'm curious. I'm really curious on New Year's Day. Uh, what got you into dispatching? Good question. Uh, the answer is I needed a job. <laughs> That's the answer. And um, what got me out of dispatching? Uh, it made me crazy. So. Um, yeah, that's right. It is now, as of January 1st, 2019, I am not really dispatching. Now, I talk about dispatching, but I think really what's important is I moved just beyond talking about dispatching. Now I talk about the entire auto transport ecosystem. And what's also helpful about not just day-to-day -day dispatching is that when I talk to brokers, I'm not as frustrated, which is important because the question came up recently, does the auto transport industry need brokers? Do you guys know what the answer is? That, that'll be the question of the day. Does the car shipping ecosystem need brokers? What do you guys think of that? Here we go. Question of the day. Does car shipping need brokers? What do you guys think? All right, let's go back. That is a good question. Uh, it is a good question, actually. A really good question. I agree with Clarksville. CTS, before you jump, what is financial freedom? Just kidding. Well, you know what? And here's the thing is, I appreciate that. The thing about CTS and the reason why it's important to um, just play the commercial. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, the reason why, man, I lost my thought. The reason why CTS is beneficial to you, I know. Why spend 100 bucks talking to a couple guys? I'll tell you what. And, and we charge because we believe in the time, and there's already so much. I'm already, you know, the show is free. I've got over 100 videos free. You can check out all that stuff for free. But we ask you for the $100 to spend time together to really put our heads together. Is your business on track to make money? With all the money you've got at stake, I mean, you've got a lot of zeros behind whatever that first number is that you've got on the line to make this work. Spend the hour with us to put our heads together. Are you on track? Is this a mistake? That's what we talk about at CTS. We keep it real. So, yeah, I mean, it is, I believe it's worth it. I really do. Um, and we're here to help you until you, maybe you don't need us anymore. Maybe after two hours of, of maybe after two sessions, you don't need us anymore. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but you know what? Let's talk, really. Let's have a good, hard look at reality. Another reason why I like your show, Jay, is because drivers are helping other drivers on this live feed. I see that a lot, and I think that's very, very awesome. You know, I agree, Patrick. I see it too. And actually, that what I was I was looking at a lot of the Facebook groups and threads, and there's and I've talked to people about it. There's so much negativity. I don't know if it's the, a feeling of competitiveness or just the atmosphere. I don't know what it is. I mean, and you know what? It's a hard industry, and there's a lot of frustration out there. But I see a lot of help with not so much drama. So maybe that's the new tagline. Auto Transport Intel. All the help without all the drama. So I don't know. I'm really proud of that. But it's you guys that helped me make that. So thank you so much for pointing that out. Play the CTS commercial. Um, I will. All right. Yeah, we'll do some of that. Happy New Year. Oh, why, Sean? Happy New Year, Jay. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. And thank you. Um, and you know what? And I actually, I, I make the live chat segment go pretty long sometimes, but I like it a lot. I like talking to you guys. It's awesome. Key, uh, M Fields. Hey, it's Marcus from Exclusive, Exclusive Luxury Transport. Las Vegas, saying Happy New Year to you and everyone on the show. Well, Happy New Year to you, Marcus, from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. You see how that works? So, guys, you know what? If you want to tell other people who you are and where you're at and plug your services, man, you're welcome to do that here on Auto Transport Intel. All right. Peterbilt 379, do you ever get recognized in the public? Uh, no, not really. No, it's not there yet. Um, but uh, I get recognized in car hauling. That is happening. So, like, now I'll be talking to, like, let's say it's a major broker. Like, I was talking to, uh, we'll say one of the top five load boards, okay? And um, we were just were talking about a car. And I said, hey, did you know that I have a car hauling YouTube channel? And he said, yeah, I did. 
So that was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I'm getting recognized a little bit in the car hauling ecosystem, and that is pretty cool. So thanks for the question. Always eight over seven. You can load seven on an ape and not the other way around. Great answer. That's a great answer. Yeah, I'm pumped for 2019. I'm pumped for 2019 too, Ty. High five, buddy. Yeah, man, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. Um, Darren Shara, the income is relative to your own situation. My personal opinion is if income is the driver to get into this business, you may not like it. Just an opinion. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've actually said that on the show. Um, Ty and I say that if you're in this for money, you, you may not want to get in this. Uh, and that's a strange thing to say, but it's kind of true. You know, and if, and if you don't have a background, if your background is like ballet, you may not want to get into car hall. You know, not that there's anything wrong with ballet, but man, it's just, you know, did you work on a farm? Have you been in welding? Have you worked around race cars? That's the kind of stuff that you may have wanted to do. Have you lived a hard life? You might be ready for car hauling. Uh, why financial headache? Oh, well, you know what? That's a great question for the panel at nine o'clock. I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about that. W Ty, will you help me? We're going to talk about why financial headache. That's fantastic. Um, then, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, really, we should talk about that. What's happening, Ty? I'm also pumped. Yeah, man. One of the downsides to being a car hauler is that they get pulled in the scales all the time. No doubt about it. Peter built three. Peter built three seventy nine. Nailed it. I mean, it really is. It's crazy. Scale city out there. Uh, had a two wall. Had two Wallimo eight car trailers before going Stinger. That's pretty cool. That makes sense to me. What's up, everyone? Bad Apples is with us. Hey, what's up, Bad Apples? Uh, my brother Ty, what's up, buddy? Long time no chat. That's from Jeff and Faith and Freedom. Around here, I live, I see the older classic big rigs all the time just asking at Trucking Answers. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, and don't forget, because Mark is with us, and um, I try to remind you guys, every Monday, you're going to want to watch Trucking Answers live on YouTube every Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. All right? Trucking Answers on YouTube, 1 o'clock Eastern every Monday. And he's answering uh, questions, all things trucking. So if you've got trucking questions, he's got trucking answers. Don't forget to check him out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, ctsbusinesscoaching.com. The enclosed car haulers make a lot of money. Well, yeah, they do. They make more money. But um, you got to be, I think you have, a, have to be a better networker to make that money. So um, it's because it's a customized niche business. Takes time to build clients. And if you don't have a cushion, you'll have to work twice as hard to keep things going. Amen, Jeff. Uh, I don't know if there's a shortage of, of brokers or not. I always hear about the driver shortage when it comes to the trucking industry. Well, you guys know what I like to say? I don't think we have a trucker shortage. We have a millionaire shortage. Okay. So put that in your book. Cattle hauling runs the coolest looking trucks on the road. I agree. Cattle haulers are cool and cars are not cattle. Nope. Don't need a broker if you follow the suggestions of Jay and Ty. Okay. I, I appreciate that, Jeff. I do appreciate that. Um, and I'll get, I'm going to give you the answer to the question of the day here shortly. Real soon. Uh, I'm running over on time here. In fact, I'm running over on time. Okay, guys, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, and Silver Mint is with it. If it's not for the money and freedom, then what is it? Amen, Silver Mint. If it's not for the money and the freedom, then what is it all for? Good question. I have no idea, really. Nah, I know a little bit. But what I want to say is this. All right, question of the day. Here's your answer, question of the day. Yes, the car shipping industry needs brokers too. Do you know why? Here's why. Because if you're a carrier, as you grow, Let's say you're just a carrier, you develop a couple clients, and your business starts growing. Guess what? Your customer, your very valued customer, is going to eventually ask you to move a car that you can't move. So what are you going to do? I mean, you just can't move it. Listen, if you're on the East Coast, you always work East Coast, and your very valued customer says, I need a car moved from Los Angeles to Seattle. Well, you're on the East Coast. You don't, you're never in Los Angeles. You wouldn't even know how to get to Seattle. Uh, maybe you can find it on a map. The point is, you need to help your customer, and you're not over there. So you're going to need to do what? You're going to need to start to act like a broker to get that car moved. Now, I realize you might have friends, you might be able to do it that way, but if you want to get that car posted on a load board 
and start and have someone else help you move that car you start entering the area of brokering so the point is is that yes carriers move the cars carriers are the ones that deserve the lion's share of the transport because of that but brokers serve a function in helping connect shippers with carriers in times where the carrier just can't service that uh, that customer and so that's where brokers come in now when brokers take over and you know it feels like brokers are driving the rates down and just not appreciating the carrier well that's when we start to ask if we even need brokers but the fact is that brokers are part of the ecosystem too i hope that explains and answers the question and i hope it rings true with you but I know, never trust a broker. Well, a lot of people feel that way. And believe me, I have felt that way too. Uh, and now I have atoned for my sins. Okay, uh, let's do some industry news. We don't have a whole lot here. All right, here's one. Truckers be like selfie with a friend. That's a, that's a good one. Actually, I've done that. Who Show of hands, who's done that? Who's tried to get that picture? I've tried to get that picture. Definitely. Um, I found this real interesting. I think this is a real picture. I think that's an actual snow drift on that Chevy. That's great. That's pretty crazy. That's some intense wind. Um, you don't want to be you don't want to be loading cars in, in a in a in a wind like that. I'd say. All right. That's interesting. I think that's real. And oh, I think he shot it out of his garage. It looks like he's standing in his garage. You see the Christmas lights. That's a really interesting picture. Um, there's another, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess that's really the company truck. Is it? I was going to blur it out, but you know, I saw it on Facebook and if it's on Facebook, well, it's got to be true. So there you go. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously it doesn't look like he's doing that, but uh, it's interesting. I like memes. Um, in fact, Kimberly got a meme game and we have yet to play it. So um, you know, if you like memes, send me your memes, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and, um, and we'll play the meme game. Government shutdown equals no way station open. I'm loving this. You know, that's the thing. You know, government shutdown is not like 100% bad. It's bad for the trash, and it's bad for the post office, um, but uh, it has other benefits, yeah, especially when it comes to the scales. And let's see. All right, what do we got here? It ain't blinking. Oh, you know this. I keep this. I keep the show clean. So um, you know you have to read that. But it's true, right? Don't you feel like the blinker? Does anybody use their blinker? When are, the, are they just gonna like get rid of the blinker altogether because nobody uses it? It just irritates people. It should be called in the future. They're just gonna call it the road rage light. Okay. Um, and here's, here's something that we need to get this changed, um, this year. Can, can we, can we bring down the, what feels like kind of like driver misappreciation, a dollar to use the bathroom, no coffee, no water, no microwave. Okay. We do not tarp your loads. Okay. That might be the only thing reasonable on there. I understand that, but stay in your trucks. You stay in your trucks you don't bring us a dollar to use the a dollar to use the bathroom. That price, I believe, that price will go up. Uh, and a trucker attacked over a parking spot. Gee, I wonder why. You know why? Because he couldn't use the bathroom. He couldn't get coffee. He couldn't get water, and he went crazy. I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay, that's pretty weird. Um. Oh, here this is interesting. F found this interesting. I don't know why I blurted out honestly heads up for those of you that may not know bleepity bleep is now known as advectus transportation services and have 10 negative feedbacks for non-payment in the last two weeks one of them by us which isn't the owner bleepity bleep in prison is beyond me why is it the owner he has been scamming carriers for years please spread this and be aware okay clearly i'm gonna bleep out the owner's name because that i mean that's just gonna be you know and, and really, I mean, this is on the verge of slander, except this was posted on Facebook. I'm trying to do my part to bleep out the bleepity bleeps, but does anybody know what this is all about? Um, if you do, please comment below or stick it in the live chat. Uh, I honestly don't know what this is about, but I found it interesting, and uh, 
I think this goes beyond crap company of the week. Wouldn't you say? I mean, it really it got really specific. Okay, and I don't know. Found that interesting. Looked like uh, one of those vehicles that I hope it pays good. Let me just say that. I hope it pays. That should be called I hope it pays good. Oh, and here's our last one. Uh, I just emailed Idaho my IRP. One condition for renewal, my company has to have current UCR. Please note the start of the 2019 UCR registration period is delayed. You guys, yeah, have you guys read about this delayed? You should use it, well, because of the shutdown. UCR is managed by the state of Indiana with the government shutdown. The FMCSA probably won't rule on the fees until the government's back open. I wonder if the budget bill that has been. Yeah, it's, it's interesting um, how. Not only set aside the shutdown, there was already a delay on the rulemaking process, and then you add the shutdown, and I mean, what are you supposed to do? And then you end up at a scale, and like, well, you haven't paid your fees. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Oh, well, it's a good thing the scale's not open, I guess. It's crazy. It's unfair. That's why, you know, one of the things we talk about is, you know, you think, you, you think that you can just, you know, start up a business, move some cars, and, you know, get on with your life. And no, I don't think you can. It's not that simple. It's not driving's the easy part. Shoot, other than driving, loading and unloading, that's also the easy part. It's all the other crap in between that makes it so difficult. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna run the. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, check this out. This is pretty cool. Um, so now uh, because I'm uh, I'm connected to. Um, express truck tax. If you want to, you can go to ati2290.com. ati2290.com. That's Auto Transport Intel. ATI. ati2290.com. If you want to file your 2290. And check this out. This is pretty cool. Um, let's go check out the site. 20 ATI, ATI, just type in ATI, 2290.com. And this is, yeah, this is me. So now, this here's a, this is a good sign, right? We, we need some good news. So this is, now, if you want to, if you want to help the channel, you can go to ATI, 2290.com to follow your 2290. And um, a small portion of um, your... Schedule one minutes fee will go to the channel Auto Transport Intel and help it grow. And so this is a this is one of the few referral programs that I have up and running already. And I've got some more referral programs in the process and development. But anyways, ATI twenty two ninety dot com. How cool is that? All right. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to run this. And then while I'm running this, I'm going to have, um, uh, oh, if you're a new car hauler, you're looking for insurance. You've got your equipment. It's time to get insurance so that you can begin the process of getting towards hauling cars. So where do you go? What do you do when you need insurance? Who can you talk to? Well, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance and you want to talk to Sam. Now, Sam is a friend of the show. And again, it's PelicanTruckingIns.com, Pelican Trucking Insurance. Go to the webpage, scroll down, you'll find the phone number. There's a phone number, 225-308-9882. You can talk to Sam Farr. Now, it's sfarr at lemoineinsurance.com but he is with Pelican Trucking Insurance and he wants to answer your questions. He wants to talk to new car haulers. He wants to talk to established car haulers too that are looking for a better rate. If you're unhappy with your insurance rate or you don't have a quote yet and you need a new insurance quote, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance, pelicantruckingins.com. Ask for Sam Farr. You can send him an email, put in a phone call, and again, you're looking for an insurance agent you can get on the phone, you can talk to, you can get advice from. What kind of a deductible do you need? How much insurance do you need per vehicle? What about automotive liability insurance? It's your liability and your cargo, that's what you need. So you can get on the road hauling cars, get set up with the brokers, on the load boards, or if you're talking to a dealership direct, 
they're going to ask about your insurance. So go ahead, talk to Pelican Trucking Insurance, ask for Sam. I know he wants to talk to you. Again, here's his phone number. I'm going to scroll down on the page, pelicantruckingins.com. Call Sam, 225-308-9882. Send him an email, S far at lemoineinsurance.com you can also find him on facebook and instagram and he's waiting for your call i'm jay at auto transport intel and i approve this message okay cool thank you guys so much for your patience on that you know um what's happened is I, it seems like i've outgrown i've kind of outgrown the studio here and um so I'm trying to trying to work within that constraint. Hey, what's up, Gene? All right, so go ahead, Gene. Go ahead and uh, get your um, get your audio set up like we had it before. It's cool. Brent, do you hear me right now? Yeah, I hear you. All right, there you go. All right, awesome. So, um, all right, so now, first of all, Gene, I want to welcome you to Auto Transport Intel. Um, thanks for joining me live here on New Year's Day. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys. I mean, Jay, you're a very friendly guy. Thank you for the opportunity over here. Cool. Cool. And so, all right. So listen, Gene, we got a, we have a very interesting, uh, situation here in that, um, I met you through Facebook a few weeks ago, maybe not even a month ago, maybe. And, um, Gene, you are... You are working remotely as a car shipping agent, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. And within car shipping as an agent, what we're talking about is brokering, right? That's correct, eh? But, correct. but you are not a broker company, right? No, we are not a broker company. Right. You make phone calls to prospective car shipping customers yes uh we got leads and then we try to uh uh deal with the client and then for a carrier and then help, help that person out to ship his car right okay and let me ask you this too um how's the audio is there is the audio okay out there and tv land everybody hear them okay okay cool all right so and happy and we still got people coming in happy new year's everybody coming in right now um, I appreciate you guys joining me again on a Tuesday night, especially on New Year's Day. And all right, so Gene, um, because I want to, I want to slowly pull us into this interview because I have never had an interview like this before. In that, um, there's a few things that are really specific and different about your situation. But first, I want to talk in a broad sense. All right, so you talk to how many? How about this? How many phone calls a week on your busy weeks are you making? Well, uh, to be exact, I, I don't have a, 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 a number, but I my record is uh, probably 200, 150 calls per day. Per day. Yeah. All right, cool. And so you're calling, we'll just say, oh, so we're going to say over 100, because 100, listen, I've tried to make 100 calls in a 100 phone calls in one day, and it's, it's really hard. Yep, it is hard. It is hard. It is and uh, hard. you got to be constant on that. I mean, it, it, it's really hard. Even 50 is a lot. 50 will tire you out. Mm -hmm. So 100. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, all right. Well, who are, so, then, so then the question is, well, who are you calling, right? Hey, what's up, Lee Jones? Welcome to the show. First time here. Um, all right. So who are you calling? You're calling people that need to have their car shipped, right? That's correct. I call them and I ask them, um, and I know that you want to transport your car from state to state, and then I, I make a conversation a conversation with them, and then I, I tell them the price of uh, how much it will cost them to move their cars, and I'll give them an estimate date. So, you know, I'm trying to do my job right there, and then once I book them, I just do the normal paperwork. Right. And so what's happening is when you call them, you have you have information, you have pickup location, zip code, 
delivery location, zip code, year, make, and model of a car. Right. What else? I I got the estimate uh, date that the client wants to uh, pick up the car. So I go from there. Okay. And I I have to read on my system how many miles it will take to deliver the car. So I just gave them, like, uh, I gave them the estimate date of drop off. Do the customers already have a quote at this point, or are you also providing a quote? I'm providing the quote as well. All right. Now, so that quote, at this point, I mean, you probably are able, just like I think of like a car buyer at an auto auction. He knows, he already knows probably what he hopes to pay for this vehicle. And on the other side of that, you probably already know what is a reasonable quote. And then there's, you know, the price that obviously you want to try and get. Just like a carrier is hoping to get a good price. So you are pr- probably pretty good at spot quoting cars. Exactly, yes. Yeah, That's my job. I believe it. Okay. All right, so there you are. You're making these calls. and And so you've got these leads okay so that's what we're talking about you have cold leads but yes i call them leads because uh, we have a system that collects uh some leads and uh let, let me be honest with you guys um probably i get like uh, around 60 leads or 100 leads or probably 150 leads per day wow and uh, i have to make a cold and then i have to call them and uh you know treat with clients and everything so what's interesting is when the lead comes in, um, it's actually not cold. It's probably pretty hot. You don't want to let it get cold. Yes. Right there, when, when I get the lead right there, I just call the customer right there in the moment. So I call him and I will be like in the, in the call. I mean, making a conversation. Why are you trying to move your car? What is your first time to pick up? In the other side of my screen, I, I'm just looking the, the distance, the calculation, so I can have an idea of what is the price of the code that I'm going to set up for the customer. Right, right. And so, so there you are. And now you must know when you call them, you probably have a great sense of, okay, are you talking to somebody that is this going to be a long phone call? Is this going to be a short phone call? Do I have a good chance of helping this customer get their car moved? Does it seem like they've already got many phone calls? Right? Is all this stuff going through your head when you get them on the phone? Yes. Uh, sometimes I have customers that they, um, they had offered them, like, uh, I don't know, probably a price. And then I have to go there to convince them, hey, book with me. I will, I will, what's your budget? Tell me what's your budget, right. and I will try to help you out. All right, cool. So that's what's cool is that right now, if 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 you're out there and you're listening to this interview, you're watching this, one of the things, like in my videos of dispatching, I try to teach things that you might want to say to keep a conversation going. What's your budget is a great way to talk to a prospective customer and keep the conversation going. All right, what, what else might you say? Okay, um... Well, uh, when I call this customer, sometimes another technique that I use is uh, um, first, let me do my job. Let me get the job done, and then I will charge you. You can pay on the delivery, which is the drop-off, right? Because the lead, I have to charge them a deposit, and that deposit is charged online. So yeah, think about, there's no upfront payments. Let me get the job done. I get the driver and then I charge. Right. So the customer, he feels like, okay, this is not a scamming page, this is a scam, scamming company. So that's another strategy I use. Well, and, that's, and so it's interesting, and I, I want to help clarify this too. A deposit, in many cases, a deposit can be seen as a problem. But the reason you want the deposit is to solidify a contract with the with the ship with the customer right i mean you want you want to service them and so by securing a deposit you make sure that you have a business transaction to move forward with because if you if you post somebody's car for 
as a as a broker, if you post a car and you don't have a deposit, w- what could happen? Well, it, we got some. Sometimes we got some issues on that because sometimes I can charge the deposit right there and they sign the contract. But what happens if I don't get a driver on that? On that estimate time. So that's a, a problem with the customer. Well, sometimes I get. I, I, I charge them and the driver never shows up. So I have to refund right. them. Right. Yeah, right. Okay, right. First, first, I make them sign the contract. Then I get the driver and then I charge the deposit. Um, I understand. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, how long have you been, if we, if, if we were trying to extrapolate how many people you've talked to, if we do, if we do like a hundred calls a day, because you had much higher than that, how many days have you been doing this? How many days? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know how many days, but uh, probably uh, four months. Okay, for okay for yeah. a month. Yeah, you've been doing this for a month. Okay, all right, fair enough. And the reason why this is important is that. Um, you've, you've, you've made a lot of phone calls and at this point, after a month of doing this, I mean, you feel like, do you, how do you four feel? Four months, four months. Four, okay, for four months. I thought it was longer than a month. Okay, four months. All right, so you feel pretty confident at this point. When you get a lead, you know what to do. You're, you yes. call it right away. You know what to say. And you, you're, I mean, your goal is to make this lead and turn it into, take this lead, whether it's cold or hot, and turn it into a customer. Now, you make 100 calls a day because the, maybe you have 100 plus leads and you make all those calls. Uh, how, many, how many leads do you think you call? How many leads do you have to call to, to get a customer to convert into, to get a lead to c- convert into a customer? What would you say? Uh, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 30 to 1? Probably 10 to 1. 10 to it 1. Depends on days, depends on seasons. Because I, I make 100 calls, and then uh, I, I, those 100 calls, some, sometimes clients, uh, they have another uh, carrier or another company. Some day uh, they are just in hold, trying to move the car next month. So I have to do a follow up. So, can you imagine? This is one of the things that I think. Can you imagine as a carrier trying to fulfill a hundred phone calls, a, like a driver? It's not possible. Mm-hmm. No. And that's another reason why brokers are an important part of the ecosystem is who's going to handle all these leads and make all these phone calls. It's just like why as a dispatcher, I have always said to drivers, listen, you sometimes you just need a dispatcher. How are you going to make all the phone calls? It's just a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a specific function. It's like being a restaurant owner. Somebody's got to wash the dishes. I don't know if the maitre d can wash the dishes, right? Somebody's going to have to do it. And the and the reason that there, I mean, it's a, it's amazing to think if you're making a hundred calls a day. And we, we, I don't know if we look at this as a nation thing or global, how we consume this, but how many leads does that mean there are if there's enough leads for you to be making 100 calls a day? How many leads is that? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. So be, so be a thousand leads. Uh, I don't know. It'd be more leads. Is it 50,000 leads a day? I don't know. I don't know. That's actually crazy. I don't this think I can. Number. I can't grasp it. Well, that's why people ask me, and people ask me and Ty. You know wh- what? How how big is the car hauling industry? I, I it's it's hard to grasp. Actually, there are some. Uh, there's a few companies I want to talk to more about the volume of, you know, in one year the annual volume. And in fact, I I saw a number recently that the just in the United States, the gross revenue. From the car hauling industry was somewhere over ten billion dollars. Wow! Just last year. So I don't know. I mean, it's really hard to grasp. Um, 
But, oh, that's cool. Mike says dispatchers are a blessing. Well, thank you, Mike. And um, and you know what? And that's why we do. We need the whole ecosystem. And that's the point. The reason we're talking about this, Gene, is that we're for a couple reasons. One is I want to impress upon anybody watching this show that there's this show is more than just how do I how do I strap down a swivel hook on a Honda Accord? That's not everything the show's about. The show is about an industry and an ecosystem and how much there is to grasp. And then the other part is I want to help people. Uh, okay. So Gene, I want to help you. I told you I wanted to help you. That's why I originally said, I want to have you on the show. And w Gene, what, what can we help you with? Uh, I really appreciate you, uh, Jay, for the opportunity to be in your show and, uh, your help as well and uh well i'm a self-taught broker because i learned it by myself i have my great managers and they teach me they give you like a hand but you have to study extra to learn this uh ecosystem of car hauling but um i'm just uh looking for new opportunities i'm open and uh i can work from as a remote agent so I'm looking for new opportunities as well. That's right. So you can work as a remote agent, and you're available. If there are com if there are companies out there, one company, more than one company, that could use a good person on the phone to help make phone calls, to turn car shipping leads into car shipping customers, you're available to do that. Yes, I'm available to do that. Uh, if I, if I know that uh, other company use different systems, I think I'm right now I'm about to graduate as a computer science engineer so I can adapt to any system. And uh, I learn fast. That's right. What's your educational background? Yes, computer science engineering. Your computer science engineering, yeah. I'm pretty sure the car shipping industry has more room for people with car uh, computer science engineering educational background. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Dude, so, all right, so how can people get a hold of you? Well, uh, they can contact me um, via email. Okay. If wish. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna type your, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to type your email address here. Okay, what's your email address? JJM2066. At hotmail.com. Oh, yeah. 2066, right? Yes. All right. Let me just make sure I got this right. JJ, JJM2066 at hotmail.com. Okay, so I just shared it. And are you able to see the live chat right now? Uh, I'm watching it right now. Hold okay, on. good. I just want to make sure I got it right jjm2066 at hotmail.com and i don't know you know if you'll get an email today or in you know next month or in 20 years but i i'm telling <laughs> you i really that and that's one of the reasons i wanted to bring you on the show i really i immediately knew that you bring value to the transaction to what you're doing and i hope that somebody capitalizes on the value you bring so um That'd be it'd be great. So you're gonna keep me posted. Let me know if somebody contacts you and brings you on board. And in the meantime, you're still a remote agent for one company, right? Yes. Right. And so that and that's in that company you're making all the phone calls for. And now um, at this point, what do you do? Do you do what do you do if anything to continue expanding your training and understanding? of uh auto shipping carriers equipment w what do you do where do you get information uh i don't understand your question <laughs> well yeah how do you get how do you get car shipping information to be better at this business like where do you learn do, 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 is there... oh okay uh well i learned on um I do my own research on uh, uh, web, right? And um, with the whole experience in this, uh, my job, my current job right now, 
and just uh, learn how to speak with people. Yeah. And, uh, other information, I'll just look it up on YouTube. I read books. I uh, try to understand the transportation business and uh, that's how I learned. I know I threw you a curveball there, but you know what? You know what it made me think of? You're bilingual, aren't you? Yes, I speak Spanish. It's my main language and uh, English. Yeah, and, and that's also, you know what, I I really, I think your English is excellent. I think that, uh, especially with that bilingual capability, man, I mean, you're, you're a definite asset to somebody out there. I bet you right now somebody is thinking, man, I wish I had a bilingual computer science genius that I could hire remotely. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I got clients that uh, they, because when I call them, I start speaking English with them. Right. And then they are like, uh, they're Spanish speakers. And I goes, hey, do you feel comfortable speaking Spanish? I can help you out. So they accept. And then it's easier for them. Nice. And Gene, you know what? Your professionalism, it, it's obvious. Um, I, I mean, I, that's wonderful. I mean, kudos to you, man. I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. That. Cool. Cool. Let me see if there was any questions. Ty says we're in the wrong business. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Dave says wrong answer. Okay. I think I missed something. Um, uh, why Sean says he's going to check with progressive. And including the update calls, where are you now calls. Oh, man, there are so many. Ha like some customers, here's a good question for you. All right, we'll see you later, Matt. You, you have to be safe out on the road, dude. Um, a question, good question for you is, uh, now some customers, it's not just one phone call, right? I mean, do you ever, right? Some customers take up a lot of time. You got to call back. You got to check on something, call back. Um you know, how do you deal, here's a curveball question for you. How do you deal with, like, managing all these phone calls and all these different customers and demands and requests and the pressure? I mean, what? how do you manage that? All right. Uh, it takes time. Sometimes I have this uh, program in my cell phone, and I have my computer, which is at the same program installed right there. So if I'm in a phone call with somebody in my computer and then I uh, receive another call in my cell phone, I try to answer both calls. So I put one, the first one on hold because sometimes I, you know, it, some customers, they give you time. So I'm just going to be, uh, okay, let me check your profile real quick. I will put, uh, place you on hold. And then right there, I answer the other customer. That's I know exactly what you mean. You, you you give me flashbacks because as a dispatcher, I could be on the phone trying to book a car or something really annoying like an update or whatever. And I and then there's a car that pops up and I got to call now. So I'm I'm doing I'm doing my cell phone and my office phone. I'm muting muting talking muting talking muting right right. And that's yeah, awesome. that's an awesome technique. Fast. Yes. It's a multitask, but sometimes I receive calls from drivers as well. So I, I'm just going to be a, uh, just uh, give me one second. Let me call you back in two minutes. And then you got to continue multitasking. Yeah, totally multitasking. And that's, and you know what? And that's another thing. I mean, I can tell that's what to be, to be good and in, in this business on the phone, uh, to be out in the field, you have to have special special qualifications, like I was talking about. But also to be in uh, on the at the desk on the phone, there are some special qualifications that make you really helpful and beneficial to the company. And I can tell that, Gene. I know I can just tell that about you, man. I know you bring a lot to the table. So, man, good yeah, job. Yeah, because I'm not a multitasking. Is it you're being a phone call? You gotta if uh, the customer doesn't answer, you gotta send them a text message. Probably the customer is uh, driving or working, or who will not answer their phone. So, and then I have their email. I send them the quote to the email. They just, I receive emails, I receive text messages, I receive phone calls. It's a very multitask job. 
So, and the final piece is you got to have heart. You know? Yeah. Right? Yes. You got to care about the customer and care about the industry. Yes. And I, that's right. And I know that's a big part, too. And, man, you have it, too. So, uh, you know, thanks for helping us out. And in return, I hopefully somebody can help you out, man. All right, Jay. Thank you. I appreciate all the opportunity you gave me. Okay. You're Thank welcome, you man. Thank you so much. JJM2066 at hotmail.com. You can reach Gene or you can comment below this video, put it in the live chat. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And Gene, um, you're welcome to in any way this video can help you. I'm going to put in the descriptions the time code and your contact information and a blurb about what you do. Um, that'll be up in about a day or so. And then you just feel free to share this as much as I hopefully this helps you, man. All right. Thank you. I'm going to check on that and I'll keep you posted, okay? Yeah, please do. Please do. All right. Thank you, Jay. All right, man. Bye. Take care. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right, see ya. That is awesome. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I know the picture looks a little crazy. Don't panic. Stay with me. I'm going to um, I'm gonna do, and by the way, uh, I apologize for the interruptions on the insurance video. I'm still, man, I've outgrown my equipment, and I hope to change that. But I'm going to run another video. We're going to set up the panel, and guys, we'll be right back, okay? Absolutely. But this particular plan this is a specialty plan that actually protects you as you as you are in commission of a CDL truck. So when you're behind the wheel of a rig, outside of your personal vehicle, anything that's considered a, a CDL vehicle, the, you get access to a plan that protects you in that world. So just for example, this is a commercial driver's legal plan that we particularly offer. We offer specifically to commercial drivers, whether or not you're an owner operator or you actually drive for a company, you can have access to this. So what it's going to actually give you is tragic accident representation. So that means if you kill somebody in a vehicle, they don't have to be your fault. Somebody slams on brakes in front of you. Now you're in a situation where you had a, uh, a multi-thousand pound vehicle that killed someone, and now how much is that going to cost you to get representation for that? Well, Legal Shield's going to be able to represent you as long as you weren't drinking or driving or anything like that. When lose a draw, you'll be covered throughout the trial for that situation. We're gonna give you coverage on all your motor vehicle moving traffic violations. Whether it could be a log book violation, overweight, it could be uh, anything dealing with speeding, uh, missing a scale, any of those things that may happen. And you know those tickets are quite expensive for a truck driver versus us regular people who drive a regular car. And sometimes they can sit that truck there until you pay that fine before you can move it. So this is going to give you access to be able to have attorneys represent you in court so that you don't physically have to be there. You can still be moving loads, making money, while the attorneys are handling those pieces of your business that may pop up. And this is a national program as well, by the way. So that means if you're driving anywhere in the United States or Canada, this plan, this plan covers you. Also, we're going to help you with IRS audit situation. A lot of you guys are owner operators. Then you got to do taxes. It's 1099 income. How do you report that stuff? How do you know what you can write off? If you get audited, who do you call? Well, it's usually a tax attorney thousands of dollars an hour just to get help with that. But with this program, 50 hours already taken uh, taken care of if you're audited, but it will go to the audit with you and all those types of things as well. The last thing I want to tell you real briefly, with this plan is going to actually give you access to get your will done. Folks in this country, 90% of minorities and 70% of all Americans we all going to die, but those percentages do not have a last will and testament to leave or dictate where that assets go upon death. Folks, we can say everybody, let somebody else figure it out. What's up? I'm just hoping that you don't have one. Why? Because they God, man, well, you got what's going on with the wig, brother. To be able to figure out what to do with the rest of your assets. New map. But also, folks, who raised new map. What happens to the schools they go to? What about the morals and things that you're putting into them? Who's going to raise them? The will allows you to be able to get that done so there's no additional cost that's included in your membership. Folks, this membership is $32.95 a month. So I guarantee you, you can take full advantage of it today. Get in contact with me at 302-270-4507. Even a fish want to get the plan. They're jumping out there. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Let's see here. 
So here we go. Here's that. Here's that. Now I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Uh, but we will get there. We will get there. Uh, let's see here. So let's bring you guys in. Okay, you guys, can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Good. We're good. We're good. All right, Don, you here with us? You can hear us? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Dave, Don, what's Ty. Up? Hey, what's up? What's All right. Up? What's up? All so right. I thought you was going to do something with that face. Hey. Didn't work out, did you? Hey, look at that map. That's looking good, man. I like good. that. Real close, you can even see some pins. Oh, nice. Oh, because there's going to be a trip to Florida, I hear. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude. So, all right, so let me officially welcome you guys to the show. Um, so out there in TV land, if you're still with us, and I appreciate you sticking around on a Tuesday night on New Year's Day 2019. I've got, hey, look at that T-shirt, by the way. I've got Ty over here. we got Ty. My business partner Ty at CTS. All right, and then down here we got here we Don. Go. We got Don at nine two nine Transport. No, he's over there. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, see, all oh, our screens. Well, no, on my screen, which is the official screen, like the Brady Bunch thing. is is over here. We got Dave, Dave down here in the corner. There we go. Dave Williams at Clarksville Trucking, and he's got Auto Transport Intel shirt on too. Awesome. So. Yeah, that's what makes me so dark. Yeah, man. Gotta wear shades, dude. That's fine. You know what, you guys? Listen, you know what? It, this kind of came together last second. Um, doing, like I said earlier, doing a holiday and event show is, is you know, it's 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 time consumed. We're, we're already busy. And that's why I really appreciate you guys taking the time to join me on the show. But the reason why I chose you three is... All three of you guys have been there for me when, you know, I, I didn't have the best of times going on. I needed help, and I was, you know, I was searching for a light in the darkness to improve my journey. All three of you guys were there for that. And, I mean, I really, really appreciate that. It means a lot. And because of holding the lantern... As I stumble through the cave, uh, you guys have helped me emerge into the lightness, right? And here, and now here we are. I mean, I feel like I have finally walked through some kind of tunnel, and I'm closer to the light now. You know, like, hey, have you guys seen uh, the Count of Monte Cristo? And he's in the dungeon forever. And he finally, he digs through the little tunnel, and he finally, I think one day, he finally right reaches the end and pokes through the dirt, and he's out there in the sunlight. Man, that's me on the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> All you need now is a cigar. I do need a cigar. Dave. Yeah, thank you. This out. Yeah. Nashville's got a pen, too. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Ooh, that's right. So we got the Nash that Nashville pin. That's right. And um, well, what's cool is Ty is that we're we're gonna be in Nashville at the end of March for Matt's 2019. And Dave, that's I Louisville. I know Dave's gonna be there. And what's funny about Louisville is I was there five years ago. I think it was five years ago, and I saw Don. At Matt's yeah. was that twenty was that Matt's was that twenty fourteen twenty fifteen and it was yeah it was thirteen or fourteen or something like that I think it was I don't know I think it was fifteen or was it sixteen uh -huh. I don't remember I think I'm fifteen sure. I'm gonna go with fifteen I think it was Matt's twenty fifteen and I I did know this at one point in fact yeah it was it was twenty fifteen look at this. Hey, Jay, your underwear were showing. Yeah, what? Look at this. I thought you want me to stand up. <laughs> this, is, this is my Mid-America Trucking Show uh, directory. 2015. 2015. Yeah. So, in fact, that calls for some ELD. 
<laughs> so yeah, man, Matt's 2015. So four years later, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. Which is um, why in, in January of this year, in just a few weeks, I'm going to be live in um, Massachusetts with Surge. And I'm trying to um, get myself out of my comfort zone, right? And because shooting on locations, not easy. What other pins do you got there, Ty? Uh, well, of course, we've got Kansas City. I'm working on putting, um, of course, we have Florida, Kansas City, Philadelphia, Vermont, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, uh, and that's interesting too. You and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but we were trying to figure out. It seems like most of the people we deal with are east of us. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out what that's about. What's wrong with the West Coast? A bunch of wackos. <laughs> oh, they know it all. <laughs> I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I tell you. No, I'm. I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna say this for the sake of the live chat. It's because it's more rural. Right? No? <laughs> what's, what's, what's he talking about? What's he talking about, honey? Who said that? <laughs> I have no idea, man. It's, you know, it's a whirlwind up here. And I just, you know, I just. What I'm working on is putting pins for all the Mannheim and Odessa auctions. So whenever we're doing our coaching, you don't have to Google it. We can just refer to the map. Um. I'm making all the that's auctions smart. green because that's where everybody needs to figure out. That's where your money's at. Green auctions. Yeah. No, and and you know what? I I, I it's it really what we went when was that? We went to the auction, we met Harold. Was that what day was that? Wednesday? Dude, I've been lost. I know. I'm just happy it's a new year. <laughs> Can you believe that it was only the Christmas show was a week ago? Mm -hmm. And when did we have our meeting? That was Friday? It's only Tuesday? What is going on, dude? I'm trying to figure out where we met Harold. Where is Harold, anyway? That was at the Odessa KC. Yeah, I mean, what day? He, he's in Michigan. I think that was... I can't even remember now. Was that Wednesday? We were at auctions. Things so are happening. The auctions. Things are happening fast. That's why, if you ask a car hauler what he did two weeks ago, no idea. I can't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, it's crazy. What are we talking about tonight, Jay? Well, this is kind of, I know, right? This is kind of it. What we're doing is we're kind of, we're, we're, we're looking back and we're looking forward and we're looking sideways. What's going on with you guys? Yeah. Nothing. It's the end of the year, yeah. right? I just got off the boat. So. It's, it's actually the beginning of the year. Right. Time to pay, time to pay fourth quarter taxes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Then what's gonna? So then what happens after that? All right. So it's the it's the new year. Okay. We just wrapped up Q4 2018. Now it's the new year. And once we get the Christmas tree taken down and we realize that our gym membership isn't everything we want it to be, although we're just, we know, it, we're, we're not going to call it quits. We're going to get back on the saddle. Then what happens? My Weight Watchers stopped. Weight Watchers is over. <laughs> it usually goes up the first every year. <laughs> At like everything else, like insurance, like yeah, it's seven, it's taxes. Seven before August. <laughs> All right. So what? But what about specific to car hauling? We're going to refine the car hauling industry. We're going to refine it. That's yes, right. Well, what's that? Well, all right. So what's a way to whether it's your business or the business or I mean, Don, what's next for you, buddy? What are you doing? Yeah. What, what are you doing? It's always, it's always tough right now because it's a three-day week. So everything's jammed into three days. So if I was doing over the road, I can't really do that anymore because you can't leave on Wednesday, make it to Texas and back, you know, by Saturday or Friday. There's just not enough time in three days, especially with the ELDs. So um, first thing I'll do is slap all the new IFTA stickers on the trucks tomorrow morning. 
and then uh we're gonna try to i mean we're doing all that local stuff now so it's not that big a deal but it's still it's all about 10 pounds of shit in a two pound bag uh three days worth of work and everybody's doing it i mean it ain't just us it's everybody's so uh, tomorrow should be basically a nightmare uh, <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing i mean the holidays they're awesome but they sure don't help the work week none well this is a very good one because at least it fell monday tuesday it's worse when you have monday as a work day and then tuesday is kind of like a who knows if anybody's working or open and you got to make a lot of damn phone calls to find out who is and who isn't open and then like the co-parts if they're open and you can't get in there to pick up and they start charging stores it's charged for a day that you know you can't even get into so it's a holidays i hate holidays i'm just like scrooge i hate them i i, I can't make the money I, thanksgiving I feel, or christmas and new year's it's just it's a rough three weeks i but, feel the same way until the holiday hits i guess and then i finally succumb to the fact that it's the holiday. oh yeah don't get me wrong i like being off we were we were out on the boat drinking beer all day today right, so. exactly. <laughs> but but when it's december 5th christmas feels like a headache yeah, yeah. Well, the good thing is for now till uh, literally Memorial Day weekend, which really isn't that bad. I mean, we don't have to worry about any holidays or anything, you know, so roll on at that point. Uh, by the way, here's one for the panel. We talked about earlier when, uh, when the question was financial freedom, because I said financial headache. Car shipping. Is car shipping a financial freedom or a financial headache? Well, it can be both. Usually starts out as kind of a headache, and then when you find your niche, then it's more of a freedom. I'm going to say anytime you own your own business, it's a financial headache. So that's just, you get you have, you have 100% of the profit, but you have 100% of the problems. There's nobody to call on the other end. <laughs> That's yeah. part of the freedom, right? I mean, and yeah, I, 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 I like what Dave was saying as far as the niche. I mean, that's something that seems like no matter where, no matter what Apple truck you fell off of, you believe that you must. Peach truck. You've got it right. Could be a peach. Could be, you know, <laughs> apple, pear. No matter what fruit truck you fell off of, <laughs> you agree that it's all about carving it into a niche that's why a lot of guys i think want to they, they, they you know they're, they're curious about enclosed car hauling because it seems like a profitable niche depends on your location that's a tough market to get into isn't it i know we had somebody yeah. you see somebody earlier was saying it is really tough to get it i mean oh, yeah. and it's expensive cargo most of those guys want 250 plus no matter how big your hauler is at least and then the insurance companies want to know what you're wanting to do with it. And then when they find out that you're hauling $150,000 cars, they start getting scared. So it's it's definitely interesting. Well, and we should, uh, man, we should talk to um, Sean Steinberg. He's in Florida. You know, he right now he's switching from a Mini 5 to a four-car enclosed. Oh, really? Yeah. He must have found, must have found work for it, you know, you would think. Right. I mean, that's an interesting... Yeah, I, you don't see that very often. In Nashville, there's not a big call for enclosed trailers. You may see, I don't know, six or eight a month need an enclosed trailer on the load board anyway. Now, once you find your client and you want to haul for them all the time, then you're going to have a lot more opportunity to haul enclosed cars. But if you're trying to work off a load board with an enclosed car trailer, you might as well forget it. Well, it seems to be broke. And it's interesting you say that because, in general, uh, sticking only to the load board can get uh, a little dicey. Here's a question, speaking of load boards. Don, most yeah. of the work you get right now doesn't have anything to do with load boards, does it? No, yeah, no, we're off with all that now. We're just doing uh, one, one customer down here, uh, down in Florida, so... Yeah, I've gotten away from all the extra expenses, which is really nice. So, and we know what we're doing. Um, I mean, it does change because a lot of stuff they, they pick up the coal parts and stuff and everything. So the numbers change and stuff, but we got a pretty good uh, little system going. Takes a minute. They're, most of their problems was just logistics and, you know, 
we're pretty good at handling that. So we do more than just ship for them. We handle all their, all their logistics and, you know, like I said before, you get in with them and start figuring out what you can do other than just haul for them, you know, because anybody can haul. It's just a matter of making sure that you're got that. It costs more money to get rid of you to go to another guy that's cheaper, you know, something's like that. Um, Interesting. Right. Rob, I was going to say, yeah, I hear, you know, what's cool. It's just in the past 15 minutes, I hear sprinklings of things that I hear you say, Ty, when we're on the phone coaching. Isn't that cool? <laughs> How do you? Well, I was thinking about what uh, I think Dave was saying, you know, this enclosed and different things like that. I heard a saying a long time ago. I don't know where it came from, but it said, sell to the masses, live with the classes, sell to the classes, live with the masses. And I've always seen enclosed as classes. It doesn't seem to be, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of it out there, but it seemed like a really tough market to me. Well, if you do both, I mean, you could hook your, your power unit to an enclosed and or uh, open trailer. And that's, that's if I was going to segue into something, you know, if I wanted to try to move into that market, I would just go out and buy a six car hauler for $300,000. I would keep my open hauler and then I would pick up clients as I go along and then snowbird seeds and things of that nature where it's real, mm -hmm. it thrives. You know, because you're going to be limited on what you can haul in an enclosed hauler. I mean, you're not putting in dually trucks. You're not. Get, you're going to have a hard time finding a backload. So. Well, you can haul yeah. a lot of motorcycles. You could. You could. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know something like that around Sturgis time or you know Daytona Bike Week. I mean, you, you got to show up a few times. You might be only a third of the way full, but hopefully you build a relationship with somebody to get all the way full. Or that's what I would do. Yeah, if you live close to a big infinity dealer or a Tesla dealer or a Ferrari or, or something along them lines, you may stay busy delivering cars because a lot of them clients have their cars delivered. They don't even go to the dealership. They shop online, they buy it, and then you take it to them. Right. So if you're around a big exotic car dealer, you may be doing okay to have a one or a two car enclosed trailer, but you better have some money lined up. So I'm telling Oh, yeah. Yeah, and if you can do it, I mean, we're not in that market anymore, but we did a lot of the sports players at the end of their season. Mm, you know, yeah. These guys have, you know, they have mm -hmm. four, $500,000 cars, and they go back home. And most of these guys that play football and just say Chicago, they don't live in Chicago. They're only there for the season. They go back to, to Texas or they go back to California or whatever, and those guys really do not care about what it costs. It's just the problem is, is that you can't overcommit because – they're, they pay top dollar for a move that they expect to happen within an unrealistic amount of time because they're flying and they don't really care, but they're going to pay you whatever. And that was a really good, you know, market for us for the two months of, you know, postseason that went on. It's just that you got to be very careful of how you book your loads because you, you can't might not be able to get back to get to the next guy because they, they don't want to wait. So... That was good money in that. Well, and that's where, like, Ty and I, we were talking about corporate relocation recently. I mean, that's why corporate relocation is a, is a, oh, yeah. is a, is a great niche, um, especially for brokers. I know several brokers that just rely on really uh, honing in on corporate relocation because it pays awesome. It's just oh, yeah. that you've got to be able to deliver or you're going to lose or worse. I mean, it's our time. My man in on the O's. So you could deliver and pick up 24 hours a day, which was, was great. Most of the corporate stuff that we were doing, at first you were trying to deliver it directly to the customer, mm. which, you know, how that always goes. Yeah. And then you're, you're, you're limited on your pickups from these yards and stuff. But then I noticed at the end when we stopped, you know, before we started getting into this is they were man high. I mean, we could pick up 24 hours a day as long as you gave somebody a heads up. And that was kind of nice. But the corporate thing definitely is good money. And I don't they know closed i mean you know maybe yeah. you're hauling open so. well and again yeah and i'm thinking open um and i, I want to say a couple things too is that that's why terminals if you have a location that you could uh, advertise as a terminal to be a point for pickup and deliveries of these time sensitive corporate relocations that's an actual opportunity that if you have a good holding yard location and the other thing i was going to say is uh paul roberts at max 
Uh, he does a lot of commercial, um, I, I mean, enclosed motorcycle moves in his two-car enclosed trailer. So you're right, motorcycles are great for enclosed All haulers. Right. Yeah, they're light and easy, as long as you've got the, the holders for them, you know, the tire holders and things of that nature, you know. Harder to identify damage on a motorcycle, though. Notice I'll that. I'll I bet. mean, I, I own motorcycles, so, you know, and it, if it's just, it's hard to inspect, you know. Uh, That's interesting. The car. A, a car is just easy to see. You can walk around and you see everything. Motorcycles have so many different bars and angles and, you know, down lower to the ground, rims. I mean, I don't. I guess it depends on who the customer is. It seems like they're a little harder to check and inspect. Plus, is there a motorcycle um, vehicle diagram? I've never seen that on a bill of lading. No, I, you just probably just write it on there. That's what I, I think. That's what I did. I wrote everything in the notes, if I remember. Hmm. I mean, it wasn't really anything too much. With I can tell the bug gets off my motorcycle. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's your bike. <laughs> well, and, ah, and that actually brings us back to it's all about the car, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. Ty is great at reminding me of this. It's all about the car in that we're talking about, we've gone at over an hour, almost an hour and a half, talking about the mechanics and this and that, and calling customers. But what we haven't talked about is it's all about the passion, the love of the car. It's not just that we need cars. We love cars. And we as, love to, to we move did, cars that pay. Well, well, right. Not only does a carrier love good paying cars, but a shipper loves their car. That's their baby. It's part of the family. That's why we uh, in the Christmas the holidays. You see the you see the the uh, commercials where he bought two Chevys. I think it was Chevy. I don't even, it was a Chevy. He bought two Chevys. He bought a red one and a black one. And he parks them outside, and she comes outside, and she's like, I love it. And she's talking about the black one. And he's like, but I bought, and she's like, I love it. And he's like, he's but a I, sissy. I love I'll it. I'll be like, you get your ass over here in this red truck, or and, I'll beat you down. And then he's like, <laughs> then he's like, well, I like the red one. That commercial would not work if everywhere, all the time, people agreed on one thing, that they love cars. You, he's whooped. Can you imagine if they, right, he's whooped. Can you imagine if they tried to make a commercial like that for a product that people didn't inherently love? It would make no sense. You can get a good read on people when you pick up the cars. One thing I learned about it when I was doing it is that I would walk around the car while they were there. And first thing that came out of my mouth is, are you gonna be at the delivery end? Because if they're gonna be the ones that signed off on it, it seemed like to me, they knew already what we talked about. So there was already kind of the communication of this and that. And you could tell just in their body language of, man, I need to get back inside. Are they really worried about whether or not there was bugs on the windshield or, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? How intricate the inspection needed to be. Um, and if it wasn't them, then I would ask kind of, who it was because if somebody that bought it off the internet i bet your ass i was going to check that thing more so than i ever would because they've been looking at pictures on the internet they never actually flew in to see it they're thinking hey i'm getting a car that's 100 percent and a lot of times those cars in, in the picture look 100 percent. they it, it got dents and scratches that they didn't see and that's one of the ones that can get you upside down really quick you know well how about how about then you just made me think of this one how about the one where um, when you go to deliver the car and you know it's not what they thought. Oh, yeah. Right. I feel horrible. Oh. Feel horrible. Or the ones where they ask you how everything works and you're like, I have no clue, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on the trailer, it's about it. <laughs> how about the first time you move a car like a Tesla and you don't even know how to turn it on or turn it off or, you know. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. I told dude, I said, well, how do you start it? He said, well, it's running. I'm like. <laughs> Was it going to run the whole really? time? Yeah. <laughs> Give me the rundown. Oh, how about the ones where there's an alarm system that doesn't make sense? Oh, yeah. Those are bad. Those are bad. I hate the ones that put on the emergency brake when you open the door. <laughs> you're, trying to, yeah. you're trying to go up the trailer and you crack the door and look out, the car stops. I'm like, shit. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> and you can't see nothing. You know, you're way down in the damn seat. You're trying to get 270 pounds out the window. Oh, yeah. It just doesn't work out. Well, and how about the ones with no brakes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Been there. Oh, man. Or how about the ones where the dispatcher books it? And it's 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 not just in op; it's way in op. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it happens. yeah, it does. Well, it is, and it's really interesting. Again, this is the stuff that wouldn't it be nice if when you book a car, like you could just do your job, go pick up a car, go deliver a car, drive, pick up a car, deliver a car, drive. It's not really like that, although. Day, Don, more and more your business has become the straightforward pickup delivery drive, right? Yeah, yeah. As, as you've done less, there's a correlation here, as you've done less on the load boards, it's become more straightforward and profitable. Well, yeah. You know, it's a lot easier to communicate and know what you have and what you don't have. I mean, a board, the board is just... You might as well throw a dart at that board behind Ty's house or head there. Just, and, yeah, and just say, okay, where are we going? State? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have no idea, and uh, you, there's you lose a lot of control with the board. That's that's just reality. You know, it's uh, there's there's no there's not enough information. And it, in Central, I mean, I'm only used to using Central. There may be other boards out there that have more information. I just well, think Central. It lacks a lot of information for the drive. A lot. Say, I mean, yeah. What's up? Remember what? Here, I'm going to see if everybody can see this. What? Uh-oh. Remember what we did the other day? Are you going to show? Are you going to? Okay. Kind of cool. Yeah. Right here. Can you see that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Remember all the things we learned about the back end of a car? Yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah, please Dom say it. Said, Dom said something that made me think of it. He's talking about car and. Cars, you can really tell uh, just like crazy things about them. So if you look real close, I don't know if anybody can see it or not. Maybe you can find one, Jay. Anyway, on the back of a car, you know what you usually see? That. You want to put that out there for everybody to guess? So you see the car, like, so that one was a Nissan, right? So it's got the Nissan M badge. And it happens to be a center, and it's got center on it. Then that one was a SV, whatever, but... There on just about every car you ever looked at the back end of it, newer cars anyway, you'll see the dealership where it came from. Right. Is that weird? I've always pulled mine off when I buy a new car. Yeah, so a lot I, of I, switch I ain't advertising for them. I don't yeah. either. What did it say? This one says Midway Motors. But it might say uh, McCarthy, it might say you know, whoever's the big guy in your neighborhood. <clears throat> and uh, as we were talking about it, one of the things that we were telling these guys was in this story of the life of a car, after it's born out of the manufacturing plant, it usually goes one of three places, whether it's train, truck, or somebody drives it to a, most of the time, dealership where when it lands there, it goes through its inspection process. And one of the last things that car gets on it before it goes out on the lot is who the dealer is. Now, uh, that's kind of weird. And who notices that stuff? But it's interesting because it is part of the life of the car. <laughs> I, I pull know. mine off. Yeah. yeah I, matter of fact, I make them pull it off. I, I've seen them well, take as soon as Where I brought it off the trailer, they were switching the tag, the switching that out, the license plate that had the, deal, the old dealer name and the and the emblem and all that. They didn't want that on their yard with someone else's information on there. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so what's your what's your point on that story? The point is, is um, a lot of times we get calls and people are always trying to find out. I just need a dispatcher, please, God, dear Lord, I need a dispatcher help. So as we start talking to people, one of the things we always bump into, look at that. See what Jay's got there? Okay. So one of the things we start asking people simple questions like, well, where do you find your cars? Like t- t- Well, Ty said to me, well, if you go to auto, if you go to central dispatch, 
is that where the cars really are? No. Yeah, so, Dave, the, the whole point, Dave, is cars are on dealer lots. <laughs> That's where they're actually at. Yeah. That's right. And, and there must be something to that for somebody to put a sticker on the back of it with their name on it. Like, if, if you want to ride oh, a yeah. horse. Yeah, I get dealer here that calls me all the time to right. move uh, GMCs for them. I like the way they pay. I wish they called more often. There you go. <laughs> right. So back to the point. The point is, is there's a sticker on the back of a car. So when I'm talking to somebody who wants to get into the transport business, I always say, where do you find your cars? Where do you find cars? And it's so it's a, it blows my mind. I mean, it really blows my mind. Where do you find cars? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Usually yeah. on the car lot, right? It's hard to start a transport business though and and do that though you you almost have to start with the dispatcher and i thought about this last night after we had our conversation and and here's the scenario okay i i'd say well i need something i'm brand new car hauler i got this i got this wedge out here and i I'm just paid eighty thousand dollars for this cool truck i need a car to haul well you're gonna have to go to the load board because if you drive your truck and your trailer around to every dealership in town and then go to the next town and the next town and they finally call you, you're going to be a broke ass. So you're going to have to use the load board. And then you say you cut, you get your first load. Okay, good. I'm going to Ohio. Well, it seems to be Friday and you can't book cars from most of your load boards three days in advance. We've tried it. It don't work. And I'm actually a guy that will show up. If I tell you I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. And you better not be late. So, you know, we was talking about that and say I book a car on Thursday and I'm fixing to head toward Ohio, let's say Cincinnati, and I got to have something to get back. Well, if you don't have a dispatcher, how are you going to get back? Because you can't book cars three or four days in advance. So that means you're going to spend all day Monday sitting in a hotel room, looking at your computer screen, spending a hundred bucks to find a $600 load going south. And then when something uh, goes wrong, yeah, somebody well, cancels or anything, you don't know about it until you're already stopped. So I, I, and I, I agree. That's why. You know, disagree. Well, no, here's what I, no, hold on. Here's what I want to say. <laughs> this is why, you know, say what you want about, about the, the person behind this quote. It takes a village. It does take a village. It, you know, and, oh, yeah. and you need, that's why it takes a team. How about that one? St no more talk about the village, Jay. It takes a team. There's no I in team, right? There's a me and there's an A and a whatever. But it takes a team, and the dispatcher is part of that team. But that's not the only part of the team you need. Is to build a business, you need to build up customer relationships. And the problem is... It's not really the dispatcher that's always the best person to the do that. The real problem is, is find an effing dispatch. <laughs> well, the dis I mean, seriously, somebody find me a dispatch. And this is why I say I'm I'm working. I'm on I'm on. We're on the same page here. Is that you wouldn't hire an accountant Why'd to you build your a dispatch and I'll load them up. You I mean, would we've got a list of people wanting a dispatcher. You, Show me one. You wouldn't hire an accountant to build your business. So why think a dispatcher can do that? A dispatcher can find you cars, but the best person to build your business is... You. 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 Well, in relationships, relationships ain't, they're not really made off on Central. They're made when I drop off the car or well, I pick up the car. Well, that's, and, and I mean, that, that's right. right. Don, how did but you, you got to pick up cars and drop off cars to do that, though? Well, but here's what you got to show up. And they say, well, well, you always come this way, and you say, Well, yeah, I'm here once or twice a week. Don, then you want to build business, but starting out, you can't just drive to the dealership with four unknown cars. Hey, like, Dave, hey, you need me to carry it? Why <laughs> can't you drive up to a dealership and give a guy your car? Because if the dealership's been there any amount of time, they got somebody like me already doing that. And well, if you throw me out to hire some more, boy, I'm Because you don't want to go to work. You, <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta break into that business. That's like when I pull up with my shit, they know I ain't playing. 
They said, look at this old boy right here. We want to use him next time. But most new car haulers can't do that. You can't just pull up in there and step out with your overhauls on and say, look, I haul cars and I'm going to carry your cars from now. That's so my point. That. That's my point. If you can't get out of your truck and walk up to somebody and hand them a business card, you may not want to be in this business. Yeah, but see, before you do that, though, you've got to, you're not, you've been in this too long. You've got to think about it. Take yourself back 20 years. You're, you're going back 20 years. You don't own 20 $200,000 trucks right now. You've got a $1,000 payment on this truck and an $800 payment on that trailer. Well, that's 1800 bucks a month going out. You can't spend your time going around and knocking on doors. I'm telling you. You right. better hook your ass up to the car. You talk to trailer. somebody before you buy a truck and trailer. Well, one of the problems I, with the dealership is, is that a dealership... No, it that, takes too long to get started. But it's, a dealership does better. They, they, they like dealing with... They need, they need a mass assortment. I mean, they, they might buy cars in three states over. They might this way. They might buy cars three states that way. I've got one truck. <laughs> if you're if you're buying in Indiana and you want it brought to Ohio, then I'm your guy. But every time you buy an Indy, you know you're in Indiana and you buy in Pennsylvania or you buy in Oklahoma City, well now you're saying no. And once you say no, usually no means no across the board. So they see that, that was my truck, problem. You know, on that. That's my that. problem. And, and with a broker, well, a broker can he can hit the masses. I mean, if you figure that, that, that Central Dispatch has what I don't know, a thousand users or whatever, there's somebody that's coming that route. You know, it's all about routes. Um, mm, running not, lanes, right? Building a running lane, right? Yeah, that's right. exactly right. Yeah. Now, if, if you get on this strategy, say, hey, what? Part of business the business strategy. Part, business strategy. Hey, Don, yeah, I want. Right, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Dave's got something. Yeah, Dave. All right, now. Now, Todd, look at it like this. You say go get the customers first. Is that what you said? You got to think about how long it yeah, takes. Yeah, no, 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 no. Back up. Back up. Back up. We need to talk. We need to go way back up before we start talking to customers. How much money do you got saved up if you really want to get into this business? Me or somebody else? <laughs> Not you. But look, we're talking about a single guy with a truck and a three-car wedge that's just starting. He's never hauled a car. At first, he has to have his MC number. He's got to have his DOT number. He's got to have his business license, his ZIN number. He's got to have his insurance, your VOC3, your MS150, or your MS90, and all of that stuff in place. And that's a lot of money right there. You've got you've got a thousand bucks in registration for the truck. You've got uh, fifteen hundred dollars a month for your insurance. You know you're busting doubt twenty five to three thousand bucks a month. How long are you going to go knock on doors spending three thousand dollars a month? You're going to take your butt over there to Central Dispatch. You're going to find a car and haul that dude because if not, you're going to go broke really really quick. You got to think you've got twenty trucks. Okay, you got two million three million dollars in equipment. This guy's got his whole life savings in one truck and one trailer. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, I, I I downplay Central all the time, but Central got us through all the slow times. I mean, every time that, you know, you had one customer that was slow, that say you had 60% of your business in, you could go to Central and find something to do for a week or two, especially if you have other drivers. It's not too bad for me because I, if it was just me driving, I'd take the week off or I'd fix equipment or I'd do something like that. When you get two, three, four, five, six guys and you're paying them to sit on their ass, hell no. I'll go to Central all day to, to you know, pull a load and hopefully something comes out of it, you know. But, and I, I, love, I love what we're talking about. I really do. And I want to say, but, Don, that's why I want to ask you, how did you get, in a nutshell, the business you're doing now, since it's not, from central how did you get yeah, that business right, right place right time <laughs> Drink right, place, the right, guys. right, right place know? right time relationships hey, i mean you built see, you built a relationship yeah every, every customer that i've ever yeah, had exactly. hey, yeah. every customer i've ever had that got me to where i am today was right place right time right place right, right time and i mean that that's yeah. 
that's the one thing we can't we can't guarantee right place right time can't we you can't you can't you can't market there's no way it's impossible but the only thing that i can tell you is that if you do the right things all the time you improve your chances of that one time being right because it works the opposite oh, here's one for you and if if you're in no place at no time you can never be in the right place at the That's right exactly time right <laughs> yeah, one of my biggest <laughs> yeah. Woo! but you got to start somewhere that's what that's what we're talking about you got to start somewhere and you don't want to start knocking on doors unless i mean the dealership they're not playing they got <laughs> joe over here he called me he says hey dave i got a mustang man needs to go to peoria right now can you take it i'm like sure so next thing you know, I'm headed to Peoria. Well, well, I don't have any Peoria customers that are gonna give me anything to come back. So I gotta, I gotta find. Mm -hmm. I said, well, man, look for something in Peoria because I gotta take this car up there. And I called Jay. I said, hey, man, I'm headed to Peoria for a, a local car dealer. Can you find me something coming back? He found me something coming back. If I didn't have him to do that, and then I would be sitting up there in Peoria all night long looking for something to call back the next day. But that ain't how it worked. Jay said, yeah, we got one over here at Joe's dealership. Needs to go to Mannheim. Okay, I got it. I dropped my car, picked it up, come home. Boom. Now, without him, that was not possible. True. And, and at the same time, I think you said to me, hey, that dealership we hauled for a couple times, we should check with them to see if they have more coming back. So it's yeah. it's it's a kind of a com. I mean, it, I like that's why I like what we're talking about. Everything that's been said plays a part. I like to think of things on, <coughs> like a uh, like a sculpture on a skeleton. All right, like a like a, a somebody a sculptor working with a you got a metal skeleton and you keep adding hunks of clay to this metal skeleton and that's how you begin the process of really creating this beautiful sculpture in that by ad, everything you do adds to the sculpture that eventually is the work of art and that's what that's what's happening here i mean it really it takes a lot of work you can't always see what's gonna end up being the actual benefit but without doing that work you you're not gonna arrive at your work of art you know one guy's got something he wants to say go ahead don no, no. What, what I was going to say is that we do have one advantage. I mean, we complain about Central and all the other stuff and everything. But if I was going to go out and start a business to make screws that go into uh, a, a motor of a car, and that's what my dream was, hey, I'm going to go make this. I'm going to start a company, and I'm going to put a machine, and I'm going to manufacture screws. That, well, who the hell do I sell them to? You know what I mean? There's no, there's, there's hardly anyone. Unless you have that connection automatically. At least with car hauling, you don't have to automatically have a connection. You just have to, you know, get have a truck, a trailer, and insurance. Mm. That's exactly right. Have all the stuff to, to strap the vehicle down. That was another thing too. I was thinking when you were talking about prices. You know, every time I put a truck on the road, it costs me ten grand every time. I don't give a shit how I, I slice that pie. It'll cost me ten grand because first of all, it won't run efficiently. That's the first thing. You lose money there. Trying to get a guy in it that costs a lot of money. I've paid a lot of money to get guys going and then you got you know all your straps and all the stuff you don't think about when you say hey this truck's twenty five thousand dollars ain't twenty five grand it's thirty two to thirty three thousand dollars by the time you get everything lined out on but and that's an I'm, old truck yeah 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 the you know very, but, I, but I, mean, I'm get, and I, I don't want to get off the point of it but the you know point is at least in car hall and you can start this business without having to have that connection i don't have to have a friend that wants a car moved you know you can, there is there's central and there's other options and stuff to get into it you do kind of need to know where to look you know go on central or how to find stuff but there's a lot of customers it's not like any other business startup as far as i'm as far as i can tell you know i mean you know what i mean does that make sense well uh, it has some it has some real particulars it's not like uh, some businesses, you don't have to have a deep background. You just have to have, you know, a structure and a passion and a, and a drive to move forward. Maybe, although uh, opening a restaurant, I mean, you probably need to be pretty good at whatever food you're going to make. Right. <laughs> right. And in, in, Car in Carling, we know, I mean, you, there are some things that are going to be required. 
it's better if you know how to if you know how to repair a, a, a broken part in the middle of nowhere you're gonna be way better off you know okay. if you're if you're like me and you're you know, you open the hood and, and immediately you just want to put it back down. If that's you, you don't want to be a car hauler. No. When I started my car hauling business, I had spent uh, around $160,000 before I moved my first car. Right. And that's a damn fact. I, so I, I want to know how many dealership doors should I have knocked on before I spent that hundred and sixty grand. And then when they said, yeah, I got four to haul, I'm like, oh, hold on, wait. I got to wait 90 days before I can even haul it. <laughs> how, how long do you think that's going to work? Right. They're going to be like, no, nah, it's all right. We'll just use the guy we've been using for the last 15 years. They you got to pull in there, look they might. Start, act and sharp, and have your stuff ready. They might. They might. Well, that's there are so many things to to think about, to know and angles to look at to be successful in this business. What's interesting to me, that's why I, I love hearing, Don, that you are you found a niche that's working for you. How many how many stinking cars did we book on Central Dispatch? Oh, I mean, we, we went through so many. I mean, but I, I was never able to help you develop a business model that actually made sense. I was just booking cars. I don't know if that's true. We, we, we found routes that made sense. You we, know? We, we did find, yes, but it was still a gamble most times. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah. it was too the, much the of first, a, it. It was too much of a gamble. Texas, the first time I went to Texas, I'm not, I told you this a thousand times. I was like, man, I hope the hell he can get me out of here because wow. I've never been down here before. Me too. Oh, I was on my knees praying. Oh, yeah, it scared me to death. I remember oh. being calling me at 9 o'clock at night, and I'm like, oh, thank God, because... When you first start up, every five hundred dollar car will make or break you just that fast. I mean, you know, it, there's a, there's a, there's a big difference between bringing fifteen hundred dollars worth of cars back and bringing you know five hundred dollars worth of cars. I mean, you can just go in the hole so fast, and that's a long ass way away, you know. But you know, I, work that. I, listen, I I may have missed a lot of church, but being in the dispatch office, I sure did a lot of praying. We, we worked a lot of hours too man i'm telling oh yeah exactly i mean you know so I, but that thing is that i never really even those times that i tried to turn something into a customer yeah, i'll tell you what it, it did but i'll tell you what i did do is i learned a lot by booking yeah. all those cars on central dispatch you felt a relationship with a lot of them you, you always well, say hey this is day 99 transport you know you're you know and you, you just kind of got that relationship built well and i mean i've heard you on the phone with them you and, that, and that's saying it's built it, again building relationships you don't need central dispatch to build relationships you can no. use central dispatch wow. there's many ways to build a relationship but once again i mean the the, the thing that the thing that bears the most fruit is building the relationship. So I want to ask you, so without being specific, what you're doing now is more of a straightforward relationship with a customer. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, like I said, and then I just kind of start where even if I, I've thrown a lot of money at building relationships, if that makes sense. I've done a lot of things like even just let's go back to one of some old customers back when we were doing all the other stuff. I was hauling, uh, they would move about 2,000 vehicles a year, and about 400 of them I made no money on. They would, that was for free. That, but I did 400 cars a year for free to keep the other 1,600 cars that did pay. You see, and I didn't want anyone else doing the other 400, even if they figured out how to make money off of it, because now they're in to my customer. And it's a lot easier for a customer not to have to worry about all 2,000 then it is to go, well, I deal with Donnie on this one. I deal with this guy on that. I don't want that relationship. So I, I just always strategically try to make sure that I do more than just haul cars for them. And if, if I have to, I'll do things for free or I'll go above and beyond what I have to do to make sure that right. They, well, that and, my name is the only name that comes up. Well, time. and that's, that's why building out your network so to help cover those s s tricky spots where – Maybe you can't specifically do that in that time frame. I mean, I, you know, Ty, that's what, one of the things I think that Ty did early on to really grow his businesses. I mean, he's just networked like crazy. 
Oh, yeah. Well, and a lot of these guys will help you. Uh, I mean, if you get a customer that's that big, that, that has thousands of cars a year, they'll, they'll kind of say, hey, what do you need? And they have resources. I mean, if they're moving 2,000 cars a year, they got millions. It ain't like us, you know what I mean? They're not talking in, in tens of thousands. I mean, they have unlimited resources and they want they don't. The only thing they don't want is they just don't want to be in the trucking business. That's what they don't want. Because well, if they wanted to, they would have done it. Dave, what you were know? you going to say? They, they would in it. Yeah, no. I, I tell Dave, what were you going to say? I, I understand him having to do that. You know, move some for free to keep your customer. And the downfall is a new car hauler can't do that. Oh it's, yeah. You know, if you're just starting out your business, you're probably going to have to make. I would say. That's why I was doing some math here. Probably three thousand to four thousand bucks a month just to stay afloat. Oh yeah, you have to. A leave. new car hauler with a four leave. car carrier. At least and, and you, you have to turn at least thirty five hundred to four grand just to stay on the board, just to stay alive, because a new car hauler is going to be paying extremely high insurance at a rate of like fourteen hundred bucks a month. And if they bought a new truck, that's another eight hundred to nine hundred bucks a month. And if they got a new trailer, that's another five hundred. Just depending on the trailer, five hundred to however much a month. So, so you're looking at pulling anywhere between three and four thousand bucks just to stay afloat. Man. And if you're knocking on doors, that's going to be hard to do. You got to have somebody getting them loads, and you got to roll them wheels. Does it cost anywhere between 50 and 70 cents a mile to move a car hauler just to go down the road, period? And that's yeah. just for operating costs. That don't include making anything. That's just to move it. Yeah, that's wow. exactly right. Yeah, man. Well, um, let's see. And I'm looking at the time. Here's what we'll do is we'll go maybe like another five minutes or so, and then we'll wrap it up. Um because I, mean, I appreciate you guys' time. I don't want to wear you out. And really, one of the purposes of this show, one of the goals of Auto Transport Intel is week after week to keep bringing more information from various sources. And this is not a discussion that we can finish. This is not like, a, this is not like an email that will ever be finished. Right? This is the ongoing email. It's hey, like a bar, com a bar conversation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's funny. I, I do. I think you guys, both of you guys. Now, I've never booked a car for Ty. In fact, Ty uh, has, I think you've booked very few cars off of load boards. Right, Ty? Right. But but Dave and Don, I mean, I've booked a lot of cars for you guys. Called even more. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm going to have to call and get a load next week. Right. Well, and I tell you, so we're going to, this is going to be cool. And I think we should make a live panel out of it because Ty and Dave and I and Sue, we're going to talk on Monday. We're going to have a phone conversation, not That's live. Right. We're all going to, but maybe we can turn it into a, a, a dispatch, a dispatching panel discussion. <coughs> that could be pretty interesting because there yeah. is, it's like, I, I, listen, Dave, I like what you're saying. There is a place for dispatch. But you gotta have one. No, I, I, and I agree with you. You gotta have somebody making those phone calls. Um, Until, when you when you deliver enough cars to where that dealership knows you by name and says, "Hey, you're back." I'm like, "Yeah, how y'all doing, man?" He says, "You want a coffee?" I'm like, "No, I need you to load these cars and move on." He's like, "Man, you're always working hard. That's why we like you, you know." And, and that's how it takes to build relationships. Most car haulers, you don't know how many times. I went into a dealership and they said, Hey, Dave, man, how are you? I'm like, man, I'm great, brother. How you been? He said, we couldn't be no better. Glad to see you. And you wouldn't believe how many car car companies has told me dealership says, man, you're the nicest car hauler we've ever talked to. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, most of them suck. I'm Thanks like, what do you mean suck? He says, well, they're not very friendly. They rush around the lot. They don't talk to nobody. I can't believe that. I mean, but, how do you build a customer acting like that? But yeah. the the driver is the ambassador and the business builder. He is. You need to look professional. You need to act professional. You need to drive safely on their lot and say hi to everybody. That's right. Whether and, you like them or not. And I know that about all three of you guys no, is that 
wait until you already got a truck and trailer before you do that, though. I know that all three of you guys are good at building your business when standing in front of the shipper. Yeah, and you don't want to show up on your moped. Yeah. Right? You don't, you, you don't want to try to get the business before you get a truck and trailer. <laughs> no, you want to pull in there with the $100,000 worth of shit. Then, God, damn, that boy got his I need a fucking dispatch. Hey, you guys are crazy, man. You guys are crazy. Listen, you guys, we're at the we're awesome. at the we're at the two hour mark. <laughs> this has been a great panel discussion. Happy New Year! Yeah, Happy New Year to yeah. all you guys, man. I, you I'm know not, what? Oh. Yeah, say let's ever say something about what's gonna what's happening. What what are you excited about this year? Ty, you go first. I can't even begin. It would take the, another two hours. Yeah, it's relationships like Dave, Don. You, ATI, dude, it's, watch this. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. listen, you know what? As, I, as, I, as I've said to Kimberly, and I say this to other people, is that when, what you know, it's a reminder. I didn't create this idea. When one door closes, another one opens, opens and a chapter begins. And sometimes not every page in the chapter is something you want to read. But you have to read the whole book because, truthfully, there could be another great chapter coming. And I know that I'm living proof that there are more chapters to in this book that I did not know. And, man, I think they're going to be good. Yeah. I like to just look at the pictures. Well, <laughs> I, I tried that for a while. <laughs> but now I'm reading again. That was a good one, Dave. That was hey, a good one. Hey, I'll talk one. to you guys tomorrow, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, right, uh, Happy New Year. We'll happy New Year, Ty. And uh, listen, guys, uh, Dave, Don, thank you for joining me on tonight's panel discussion. I really appreciate it. Anything to say about 2019? I'm going to get more organized. <laughs> I want a new boat. <laughs> right. I want to get organized on the boat is what I want. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, well, yeah. all right, guys. Peace out. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Yes. All right, take care. Y'all be safe. All right, peace. All right, and I'm going to let's see here. I got. I'm ending the meeting. Okay, the meeting has ended, and so listen, you guys. I just want to say this. You know. You know that um, I'm here. Oh, where to go? I'm here. Oh no, that's not what I want. I'm here every Tuesday night. You guys know that. And since this was um, since this was New Year's Day, and um, I'm celebrating, you know, with you the beginning of a new year. Let me take these off. Um, and um, oh no, I guess I'm gonna need these. Since I'm celebrating the beginning of a new year with you guys, and you and you stuck around, you joined me for another show, and you know it's Tuesday night. And I just want to remind you guys that you know that I'm here talking about all things car hauling. But before I let you go, before I run the car hauler, I want to do something special. I haven't done this in a year. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a uh, one more camera reveal of... Um, got some special people in my life, of course. We all have family and these are the holidays where, you know, we're, we're thankful for the time we get to spend with the ones we love. I'm going to go ahead and um, bring, I've got my two boys. I'm going to bring them on camera again. So here, Dawson, come on over here. Weston, come on over here. And so here we go. So there's... Where's the camera at? There, okay, <laughs> so there's... The, there, okay, so there's, we got Weston and Dawson here. So we got the future of auto transport Intel here with me right now live. You guys say hi to all the car haulers out there. I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> oh, cool. We got Oh, that's awesome. So Ty, why Sean? You know what? I want to thank all you guys for tuning in tonight. Thanks for joining me for another Happy New Year show. Uh, that's two Happy New Years for me. I'm looking forward to many more Happy New Years here on auto transport Intel. So here we go. I'm going to click the car hauler. Are you guys ready? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. So we're gonna say goodbye. Here comes the car hauler. All right, guys, wave goodbye, and we'll see you guys 
on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.